Hi, my name is Dale Maley. Today we're going to talk about how to draw wooden worm gears in SketchUp. Now there is another video and it's titled How to Draw a Worm Wheel in SketchUp made around 2018. And that's initially how I learned to draw wooden worm gears. But I find that video hard to follow and every few months if I'm working on a project and I need to draw a worm gear and I, I forget of course how to do it so I go back to that video and I always have trouble following that video. So I decided to make a new video that hopefully is clearer and is more focused on making wooden worm gears. Now when I'm going to do a project one of the first things I look at is the speed of the model and most of my models are hand cranked wooden models and I found that children can crank as fast as 100 RPM for a short time. Now if my model uh, needs uh, 4 to 1 or less I can generally do that with spur gears uh, made from wood and they're fairly uh, quick to cut out and make whereas a worm gear takes uh, at least twice as long to make a worm gear but you can only get about four to one from spur gears. So in this example we need a 12 to one speed reduction ratio. So what I do I use a free program called Gear DXF and first I design up the spur gear that's going to made up with a worm gear. So in this case I need uh, 12 teeth and I'm going to use a pitch diameter of four inches. So I use this program and I uh, it'll generate the uh, image of the gear. I save that as a DXF file and then I import that into SketchUp. Now it won't be the right scale when it comes into SketchUp so what I do the shaft bore size I use that to scale it to the correct size. So for example in this case I used a three quarter inch diameter um, bore, sh shaft bore, and when I got it into SketchUp I changed the uh, gear to match having a three-quarter bore and then everything's to scale. program works very well. Now I forgot to mention on the last slide that the speed reduction ratio for a worm gear is determined by the number of teeth on the spur gear. So in this example I needed a 12 to 1 ratio which means I needed 12 teeth on the spur gear. So in the upper portion you can see the spur gear and uh, has all the key dimensions for that spur gear. Um, one thing you have to determine is the distance between the teeth because you need that information to design the worm gear. So in this case as you can see up there the uh, distance between the teeth is uh, pi times the pitch diameter over number of teeth. So in this case it works out to a distance of 1.0472 inches. Going down to the worm gear, you have to decide what, what the outside diameter is going to be. And most of these smaller models I do, it's going to be between inch and a quarter and two inches, somewhere in there. So for this one I selected uh, an outside diameter of one and three quarter inches. Uh, we know the teeth distance has to match up to the spur gear of 1.0472 inches. Uh, if we want it four inches long, that worm gear, we need to know the number of turns of the helix for the helix program. So we calculate that as 3.8197 turns. Um, then when we do the helix program it works on the outside diameter of the worm gear and then you scale it back to the inside the smaller diameter so I would like that smaller diameter to be about three quarters of an inch so that ratio works out to 0 0.43 I initially started using SketchUp back when it was at version 7 and I've stayed with it because I'm very familiar with it. I've tried a couple newer versions, but I didn't see any big advantages, so I stay with 7. However, to be able to get this plug-in, Curve Maker plug-in, I had to go to version 2014. So I went and found that uh, Curve Maker plug-in and added it to version 2014. 
So if you're going to draw worm gear, you select uh, Curve Maker, and then under Curve Maker, you select Draw a Curve, which is circled in red. Next, you have to select what type of curve you want. In our case, we want Helix Curve, as shown here. When you hold your mouse over that Helix, uh, or you click on the Helix, it opens up an option box for you. Now here's the option box that pops open for you, and you want to select Helix, which is circled in red. Now we are at a key step in the process where you have to uh, enter the seven or so inputs into the Helix program. So starting at the top, uh, well, to get the data for the inputs, it, came, it comes from that uh, remember we designed the spur ge uh, gear first, which is the top left-hand box. Then based on that, we designed the worm gear, which is the bottom left-hand box. And from that data, that provides the input to the helix generator. So from turns, we're going to start from turn zero. And then how many turns do we want? Well, we want a four-inch long worm gear, so we calculated that works out to 3.8197 turns. And our outside diameter or rate on this was uh, one and three quarter, which radius works out to be 0.875. Sides per turn, you can use 24 or 36. Um, the only key thing is when you uh, do your work in actually in SketchUp, you have to stay with that 36, and we'll see that in a minute. Then you need to know, do you want a right hand or left hand spur gear? Or another way to say it is clockwise or counterclockwise. So you either enter yes or no, depending on what type of spur gear you have. The curve origin is at 000, which is fine. And then the heights per turn, if you remember, we calculated that, and it's 1.0472. So that helix program generates one helix at the origin in SketchUp. Now we're going to need four copies of that, or four total, and each one needs to be rotated 90 degrees uh, from each other. So make three copies of the first one, and each time rotate it 90 degrees. So at this point, you have four helixes, each one uh, rotated 90 degrees with respect to each other. And also, they're still, uh, they are still four separate groups. I have not exploded them yet. Now we basically need to fill the volume of the helixes with a cylinder. So the first step is to draw a circle at the bottom, at the origin. In our case, we want a 7 8 inch radius at that bottom. After you create the circle, type in 36S and hit Enter. The circle then changes so it has 36 sides. And the 36 number matches what we told the helix generator in the first place. And uh, it has to agree, otherwise the program doesn't work right. Once you've drawn the circle, then use the push-pull function to extend that circle from the bottom to the very top of the helixes. After that's done, then you select everything which is the four helixes and the cylinder we just made. Select everything and then do the explode function. The next thing you do is select two of the bottom helixes as uh, they're shown in blue here. The next thing we're going to do is the first of two different scaling operations. So as if you want to select something as normal, select everything and then select scale then make sure your cursor's outside of the helixes and at that point hold down the control key then go in and select the point you want to scale and holding down that control key what it does it makes the program scale around the center axis which is what we want in this case so while you're still holding down the control key go in with your mouse and select the uh, mid-center point circled in red here and then move your mouse inwards a little bit doesn't doesn't matter exactly where and maybe shoot for something like 0.80 and uh, and 
click and let off the mouse. Then if you type in 0 0.43, which is the scaling factor we really want, and hit enter, it will change the model to give you the 0 .3, 0 0.43 scaling factor you want. Now we are ready to do the second and last scaling exercise. So you do the same thing as before, hold down the uh, control key, then go in with the mouse, and on the midpoint, which is circled in red here, select that, and move your mouse uh, towards the center, and again, it doesn't matter, maybe target around 0 0.80. Then if you type in 0 0.43 and hit enter, it will change the model to the 0.43 that you want. So, congratulations! Your worm wood gear is now drawn up in SketchUp. Now for my projects, I'll do a couple more things before I quit making the worm gear. I'll add some crosshairs at the top and the bottom of the worm gear. You can see them here. And then I'll also add uh, XY axis ends on both ends. Now what that does is when you get that, import that into your model, it uh, really aids you in locating and getting the uh, worm gear in the proper location that you want. So in summary, this short video explains how to draw wooden worm gears in SketchUp. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helps you uh, on your projects and please subscribe. Thank you.